To say that you ever think about these things coming to fruition, I don't know that you do that, but I was a third generation player here. Great program, really well established. But I also knew that I wanted to be in football after I finished playing. I really believe that what you put out comes back to you. The best thing about coaching is about having that servant mindset and mentality because you want to really help elevate other people. This is a representation of the fortunate blessings I've had of being around great people that were willing to put their arm around me, invest in me, and that's what you love about football. It's the greatest team sport that there is. A lot of great people had been here that had really set a foundation for special things to occur. I know a huge part of a lot of good things that have occurred in my life are a result of being here for the four years that I was. Feel that burst you have. Catch you with your eyes. Read, read, read. Every school has a unique tradition. In most traditions, they've been that way forever and that's the way they are. It's what makes sport special. The cradle is a tradition, but it's remembering history. And I think the neatest thing of it is, is now we're adding young blood, if you will, to the cradle. The history of football is painted with the names of these guys. Paul Brown, Era Parsi, Ian Karmkoza, Weeb Eubank, Bo Beckler, and names that are so ingrained in the development of modern day football. It is just so cool that they all went here. And I don't know that there's another Division I school or any school that can say they've got 10 guys that have won at their respective highest level. Literally, you can walk down the middle of all of those statues and understand the history of Miami football. And Sean will be inducted into the cradle of coaches. To see those young names come into the cradle, I think it brings new life to the cradle and also to the recognition that that cradle gets. All right, what's up, fellas? How you guys doing, man? Good. Hey, um, you know, what I wanted to just hit you guys on real quick. First of all, it's an honor to be here. This is a special place. What you'll never get back are the times that you guys are going through right now. And you all love football. You guys are always trying to achieve and do a lot of really good things. But don't ever take for granted the opportunity that you guys have right now. We talk about this all the time with our guys in LA most important thing that you can bring is the right energy. And we break this up into a couple different categories. The first part that we talk about is the work ethic. Nothing good comes without hard work. And then you start talking about the enthusiasm. If you think about it, all right, when you watch people that are great at what they do, there's a work ethic, there's an enthusiasm where they're checking those boxes. Those are the kind of things that high achievers do. And I'll leave you guys with this. Are the habits that you have for today in alignment with the dreams that you have for tomorrow? Bring that right energy. Do the right things. But also, hey man, don't take for granted. As long as you go attack success, you never fear failure. That's what's special about football. It's the greatest team sport that there is. If you're checking those boxes every single day, man, good is gonna happen. This is a special place. You guys are special people. I love watching you guys do your thing, man. Can't wait to see a great season this year. Appreciate you guys, man. 
there's a presence when he walks into the room. And there's something about that. Certain people have that. So Sean is an automatic Miami fit. He brought intellectual and athletic together. He led with example. Certainly he had players gravitate towards him and he was a leader. And you know how to work, you know how to practice, you know the demeanor, you know when to be serious, and you know when to be light. And, and I think players, the, his teammates, love him. And you know, there's, there's a couple of those guys that are coaching with him now. Sean always pretty lock-in, focused, determined, disciplined kid. He was set that way because he was third generation. His grandpa and his uncle had fantastic experiences at Miami, and they were highly successful. I don't think you'll ever meet somebody that didn't love John McVay. What a blessing it was to have such an amazing grandfather, and I know he's looking down smiling, and this is all a result of the legacy that he set. He was such a great influence on me. You know, he passed away last year. He always treated people so well. He was so good at what he did, but he had such a great humility. Sean will be inducted into the Cradle of Coaches Association, and John has been a part of that for a while. And they are the first multi-generational family members to be a part of the association. And you know, John is a big, big part of Sean's life. Hey, I just wanted to, I brought something for you. This is from Grandpa. Yeah. This is the uh, Miami University Cradle of Coaches book, written by Bob Kurz. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of familiar faces on the back. Wow. And I wanted to give Grandpa's copy to you. Coach. Oh, this is cool, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's a lot of fun. Sean always looked at Miami as incredibly rich football history. Sean is such a gifted, bright coach but he also has the highest level of respect for teammates and teamwork because he knows, you know, you can be the greatest coach in the world, but when you don't teach those principles and live those principles, that this doesn't come together. The fraternity of the cradle is very exclusive because it's hard. It's not something that you can take lightly because of the guys that get into it win. So you see how guys have done it through the different generations. And maybe the names and faces change, the schemes change, the type of athletes change, but it's still about winning and winning the right way. And that's what I respect most about the cradle is the guys that have done it, did it the right way. And yeah, it's a very prestigious, prestigious honor to be named. It's amazing how young someone is getting a statue put on hallowed ground, but it's due. Yeah, this is cool, isn't it? What's up, guys? Anybody that claps, I know it's not for me, I know it's <laughs> Yeah, right. This is awesome. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the Cradle hey, of Coaches. you see what this is? This is my grandpa. On this beautiful day. Sean, you can see the empty chair you have sitting next to you. We've left that open for a reason. That spot is reserved in honor of your grandfather, John. John McVeigh is already in the Cradle of Coaches, so today is a historic day. The McVeighs are now the only two family members in the Cradle of Coaches. Today, we are honoring Sean McVeigh for his athletic contributions as a distinguished teacher, leader, role model, and coach. Sean McVeigh joins the coaching luminaries with a statue in the Cradle of Coaches Plaza. Without further ado, selected for his outstanding contributions as a coach and the leadership shown in the field of athletics for Miami University, we honor Sean McVeigh. Coach McVeigh, we invite you to stand next to your statue for the unveiling of your piece that will forever live in the cradle of Coaches Plaza. All Do right. the honors, please. There it is. <laughs> That's awesome. This is uh, 
This is incredible. It's an amazing honor to be here. You're so reminded of what makes this place so special and it's all about the people. Things like this don't occur without great people. The most important relationships with my former teammates and friends. You know, when I think about my grandfather's seat right there, I think about love and honor and how much he epitomized those things. He always used to teach me that, that character and relationships are the only things that last. He epitomized that. My grandfather just did such a great job of modeling the way and what it meant to be a leader, to be a man that treated people the right way, that responded from adversity the right way, for who stayed humble throughout all the good times. But that's love and honor. That's Miami. And when you get a chance to be around this place, it is so special. This is such a blessing, you know, to be honored amongst these other great coaches, these great leaders. These are team awards. And none of this happens without being around great people. I'm so fortunate and honored to be here with you guys. And thank you so much. Love and honor. biggest draft class that we've had here at the Rams and today is just important because not only is it their orientation day but this really sets the tone for them for the rest of the season. Not only are we onboarding 40 people but you have to do things individually for each person because they're not the same athlete, they're not the same human. Perfect, you are all set. For us having these 40 guys and getting them in the room at the same time is really super important and so we partner on this day to make sure that operations has what they need but also establishing that relationship and it starts at the airport. Once they finish with these three days here and with their scans and with their onboarding here, we kick off about six weeks of programming and really just try to help them understand what it means to be a Ram, what it means to be an NFL player, what it means to represent the city, and hopefully that'll kind of roll into our season and help us to be the best we can be as a team because that's really what it's about when it all comes down to it. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, this is the first time I've ever folded all of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with you. As long as it looks square, that's, that's, how, that's my philosophy. <laughs> to me, it really just doesn't seem real. I'm not sure why it hasn't hit me yet. It's just like, man, I'm an NFL player, I get to perform, and I'm in LA. I've always carried myself with wanting to help the team where I can, but I understand, you know, in this situation that I am a rookie. I know the talents that I have and I know that I can contribute. If coach believes that I'm that guy, you know, I will pour my heart all into it. It's that's not the case. I'm gonna be on the bench and I'm gonna work my ass off until I have people asking coach, you know, why is he not playing? So that's just how I've always carried myself. It's definitely an opportunity that, you know, I'm thankful for and you know, not a lot of people get the chance to even be a part of anything like this. So I'm really excited about it. See ya. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> hey, you already know what it is. You already know what it is. Man, Kobe is so funny. Yeah, he, he really can play the guitar real good. Yeah. No, really, he can play real good. Like, like I'm talking about, he, he got the tunes. I played Tennessee whiskey, but I don't think you were there when I played that. Yes, I can play Tennessee whiskey. I, that's look. I, I can do that one now. Used to spend my nights out in the bar room. <laughs> I can get busy with that, though. My roommate is Byron Young, who I trained with down at Exos um, in Pensacola. And so we had, you know, a pretty cool relationship then and to be able to continue to see that grow. Um, he's a funny dude. That's a guy that I've really leaned on to, just talking about, you know, this experience and difficulties of it, but also, you know, what a special opportunity we have. First of all, man, congratulations to all you guys that are here. And it doesn't matter where you drafted at. 
it demands if, if you are fit and if, if you're willing to, to do what it takes, and that's what it comes down to. So enjoy this opportunity because that's what it is. I want to prove to my teammates that I'm somebody who can be trusted, a guy that's genuine, a guy that puts in the work ahead of time and that prepares the right way. And, you know, that's what I can prove, you know, over these OTAs and heading into camp. You know, it's just those next steps. You know, first goal is, is making that roster and then, you know, going into earning a starting spot. And if I just put in the work every day, like I know I need to, like my conscience is telling me, and if I just keep putting in those daily deposits, I'm going to end up wherever I would have wanted to be in the, in the final place. As the kids say, touch grass. I love it. Feels good. We're back out here, right? Seeing football, hanging out, having fun. <laughs> Ready, set, finish. Right there, go, right there. I checked, did my unofficial poll about this low expectations for 2023. I think that might be false. I think you forgot to tell the players about low expectations. That couldn't be further from their thought process. Mm -hmm. You could feel that today. These guys are out here trying to get ready to, to win some games and get better. A lot of rookies, the energy, you can tell it's out there. There's some jobs right open and there's competition. You can smell that. Speaking of the rookie class, Steve Avila, the top pick of this draft for the Rams wearing 73. That is one big dude. Byron Young on the edge will be the first Ram to wear zero. Better that be allows a bad man. for yeah. that. Yeah. Kobe Turner, defensive tackle, wore zero at Wake Forest. Now he takes 91 for pass rushing opportunities to be had. Oh, Rams. no doubt. Detson Bennett in 13 gets to keep his college number and follow in the footsteps of Kurt Warner. Is RB1 locked down in your opinion? Yes, of course. It's, it's Cam Akers. Is it not for you? Hands down. That's, that's the guy. He put in a full day's work. I love that about him because there are guys breathing down his neck for reps. We all went through the offseason that was with Matthew Stafford that he was not throwing this time of year, so it's a, a very simplistic, basic observation to make. But he was ripping lasers around yeah. the today, and I like that a lot. You just close your eyes and listen. There's a few things that stand out. But did you hear Ernest Jones today? Like, oh, yeah. His voice carries the field. He is a drill sergeant. Let's go. Back to it, fellas. Re, what he's re, barking re. out is what Raheem Morris would be barking out. He knows exactly what to say and who to say it to. Watching those guys go through their drills, I mean, the energy was the same in each and every drill. And they took the pads off of the sled. Did you see that? They want to hit metal. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Morning, man. Hey, man, here we go, man. Just talk about a couple things from yesterday practice really quickly, and we'll talk about what we're going to install today. When we make this play and it's the run, we know right off the back that it's going to be a nice, easy fit for Ernest as he stacks and he falls back and he's a cap-off player. This reaction right here by you, Jordan, to me, is genuinely awesome. I love your authentic movement. Pushing outside, staying visual, kicking 180, knowing I'm getting my help from the deep end because I trust you to make that play when the ball goes up and down to be able to track it. That's how you play football. Take it to the field and execute it. You know what's going to happen on game day when we get a look that we didn't see, right? Let's go to the sideline, talk about it, and how we want to see it the next time so you never had the same problem twice. That's what we eliminate. Today, fellas, the emphasis on the red zone, right? When you get a pick down here, it is some serious mad play. This changes the outcome of games because of this right here, the rush, not letting the out the pocket and Ernest can cash in. It's the same we always do. It's just a heightened awareness and a heightened emphasis. Who's doing their job at the highest level? Who can be better at this execution of the game plan? Are we ready to deal? Yes, sir. Hey, make this practice at a higher level. Let's go to work. You like to say every single year you're starting over and you want to get these guys to earn those roles. But there's some guys that you know are going to somewhat take those roles. Right now, you know, the guy we have to talk about is Ernest, commanding the green dot this year, wanting to call the defense, make the checks, get us aligned the right way. A big part of what we do is communication. This game is a play to above the neck. When you got a guy that can play the game as well as he can above the neck, you're going to be cooking with gas. Let's go, fellas. Let's do it today, man. Let's put another day back to back. Uh-oh, I like it today, fellas. It's about to be a good one. Green dot is your best communicator. He's the guy that when I have the walkie-talkie in my hand in practice, he's the guy I'm communicating to. 
Yep, I got you. He's able to take the information right from me. Hey, let's be ready for the signals. And make it come to life. You know, we think these play calls make things come to life, but really the players. Hey, watch the flat, watch the flat. Face, face, face. Screens, all the quick stuff. He's the most essential part of the, the player coach communication, the coach to player communication, and also the player to player communication that we really build our, our whole foundation on. Hell no, good job, boom. There we go, boom. Hey, go inside if you yeah. get the back. Hey, let's go communicate. Hey, watch this backside screen here. Read, read, read. When I look at him, I, I see a man in the making. <laughs> come on. Winning the Super Bowl in his first year, having the ability to come back the following year and play with a guy like Bobby Wagner, just seeing him take the, the bull by the horns and take this defense and make it his own and kind of put his stamp on it. It's really been fun to watch for me. Good job, boys. Good job, man. All day. Hey, we off, we off. Yeah, we are, we are. This right here, it's outstanding. This run, it, it don't, it's not going to hit for anything because Ernest is always going to show up and like there's nowhere to go. They run this run just so they can run that play action. Yeah, that's a setup play. Great by Hoyt, great by DK. Like Full is going to be in there if they playing with pads and they playing physical. This is outstanding by uh, Kobe. Yes. Look at the move right there. I've seen tremendous strides from DK and from Kobe Durant when you're talking about the corner position. Yeah. Just from you being around these guys, do you have any thoughts, Double D? Outside is a dog. Inside, I feel like he will have the little learning curve of, hey, you got to get to the B gap. It'll be a great battle to see who's going to stand up on the island. I agree. And I think that's great, great stuff. Coach, can you talk about what it's been like to work with all the coaching fellows out here this week and why it's so important that this team has a program like that? I think great coaches, you know, come from all different types of levels. Uh, you know, just because we're fortunate enough to be coaching at this level doesn't mean uh, some of the greatest coaches I've been around were little league, high school, college. And it's a great opportunity to find and really be able to, you know, get exposure to great guys. You know, you look at KJ Black, who's on our, our current staff right now. It was because of this internship that we had in training camp and, and he's done an excellent job. And then you get some former players out here. Everybody loves Double D. You know, he, he's been, uh, he's a guy that always, his acumen, his ability to communicate, his presence and charisma, if he wants to be able to go into this thing, he'll be a great coach and, uh, and then we'll uh, figure out what we want to do to replace Raheem when Double D wants to step in here. <laughs> there we go. I'm a buzz, but the DB's going to get at y'all today. Yeah, big rig he. Come on, man. I seen that one hand the other day, too. Don't think I ain't see that. What's up? I had the person up, come say it was good, baby. What up with you? It was good. So look, you remember when I was out here uh -huh. and I had on that 21 and you was like, dang, you play? Look kind of small. Well, I'm coaching now. Yeah. Yeah, come on, baby. So I started my career. Yeah. I feel like I just got my rookie year undrafted into the league right now. Coming in, new, fresh mindset, and I'm ready to learn. Yep, this one. Yep, yep. that. I was the top one. Lead the way, big dog. Yep. Every single year, <laughs> you identify a few guys and say, when this guy's done, he's going to be a heck of a coach. And we knew that about Dante Dion the minute I met him. <laughs> passionate he is about the position. Those are all the things that made him a really good player. He's only gonna help be a great coach. Having coaches that I've talked football with before, as a player, coach to player, now we're getting an understanding of the game together to teach it to someone else. Man, in my heart, it's always been there. Intentional, no swatting. Stick, yeah, stick and stick. Yeah, no. As he's making his transition and he's starting to develop those roles and know what it's like, now he's going to gain those skills off the field and some of those those things that you need from a computer standpoint, some of the stuff that you need from an organization standpoint. But to put those things together, he'll work those things together seamlessly and be one of those yeah, guys that you want to be. Make you go all the way in motion and sneaking right behind and run an angle on you, bro. That's tough. Good coverage though. That's Being a part of the Rams has just been amazing for me. It's just meant everything to be able to do that and succeed in an organization like this. Oh, yeah, I'll be seeing you some more, baby. I'll be seeing you some more. Appreciate you, baby. Love.
Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jonathan Franklin, and we're excited to be here in partnership with City Year Los Angeles and a continuation of our beautification project. And when you think about community, it's so amazing to see our entire Rookley class coming together to paint murals. And these murals are in recognition and celebration of Juneteenth to inspire, to educate, and motivate the students that will be here on campus. So thank you all so much for being here and excited to really inspire change as a unit today. Go rounds, go rounds. Anytime something professional comes through the hallways or we hear about it, it gives you a, a feel of whatever your dream is, it can be accomplished. You know, it, it sets a, a standard. I ain't gonna lie, growing up, I wanted to do art and all that type of stuff. But I never did really have the time for it because of football and stuff, but like, I wanted to be good at it. Art is a way of like relief. You focus so much on the lines and everything like that and it takes you away from what's going on. You know, and it, it makes you live in the present. For me personally, growing up in a smaller town, Marlin, Texas, you know, anytime we have someone that has done something in life, you know, come through those hallways, I feel like it has an impact on us, you know, and my dreams of myself started out at a very young age, you know. It was way before high school, just, you know, a five-year-old finally understanding the game of football and what it takes to be great in it. For me right now, my biggest influence, I can honestly say Aaron Donald. But just seeing how he attacks, you know, his job, the after hours put in and stuff like that, man, it has honestly had an impact on me already, you know, and I've only been around for four weeks. To have those type of guys around, you know, who God has, you know, put in place and allowed me to succeed, just like today, how, you know, we come through this high school and we are looked at as somebody, you know, it's always good to have that. Hey, slant drill now. I want you to take this drill to the field when you get a slant today, okay? All right, if it don't work, say, Coach Yard, that don't work. But, but all right, I want you to try it. Don't be afraid to try it. One of the biggest impacts on me was Coach Dennis Erickson. He said, Yards, I can teach you football, but I can't teach you how to be loyal and how to be a good person. And he said, the X and the O is gonna come, but if you can be loyal and a good person, you're gonna go far in this profession. And that's what I tried to be, loyal, enthusiastic, and being a good person. You got one, baby! You got one, baby! You deserve it! What you say, Turbo 2-2? Here we go! Put it on the step of no kids can't play with you! You fast! You physical! You violent! Oh, yeah! I knew you was going to figure a way! You feel me? Yeah! Come on, y'all give me the full time. You're the good Lord woke me up. I get to work with Cooper Cup. I get to work with Tutu. I get to work with Van. I don't have to work with him. I get to work with him. You are a bad man. Let's go! Super That's what excites me and motivates me. Game of football has been real, real good to me. People like Coach McVay that you get to see every day. <laughs> you choose to make it a bad day or you choose to make it a good day. And every day I choose to make it a good day. If we wouldn't have went so long today, I was going to show some clips of you, man, and the way you practice, man. You practice the way you're supposed to practice. That's all you can do, right? Control what you can control. And that's your effort, your attitude, and making finished plays, bro. Opportunity to get better, huh? Here we go. Take your eyes to the football. Take your eyes to the football. Catch it with your eyes. Strong hands. Anybody can catch the ball with no distraction. He's their confidant. He engages with his players on a deeper level than just football. Nice job, Pook. Nice, Ben. Ooh, nice job right there, young. He engages with the people, the person. He's able to get those guys to, to believe in him. On oh, no those slants right there, they got the bottom. What you selling? What you selling? You selling the go, right? You selling the go. He don't want to be on put on Sports Center. And he pushes those guys. Hey, don't be afraid to fail. Use it. Use it. All right? That's why we drill it. Their failures are his failures. Their successes are their successes. Be a nerd. See it all the way. And, and that's how we coaches those guys. Nothing cool about catching the football. Great route runners have great patience. Here we go, Van. Play fast, sweet feet. Play fast, sweet feet. When I had the ability to be the head coach in Tampa and watch him work with that young group that we had, it was probably one of the more impressive things that I've seen. To see his guys feel disappointed when they let him down uh, was something that I definitely was uh, envious of and wanted to have 
and I wanted to grow that and to, to a different level after seeing him coach with those guys and be with those guys. You've earned reps, so you got to be ready, all right? all right? And what we talked about before, man, hey, you may not get a, a lot of reps, mm -hmm. all right, because you're, you're a rookie. Yeah. You make the most of every rep that you get. Yes, sir. Full speed, playing hard, playing for your teammates, man. Put it on tape, not just for us, for the whole league. Nice job! Nice job! That's where to get an edge, youngin. That's where to get an edge. Rose, that's a nice. Look like white lightning out there. This relationship is just not a four or five, seven year relationship. It's a 20 or 40 year relationship. And if guys know that you care about them, they don't care if you coach them hard. You want to hold that angle and not take it in. Keep it thin. Keep it thin to win. <laughs> days to be able to reset yourself good or bad. Man, I love this group. You guys are a hell of a group to work with. But let's just make sure we keep doing the little things the right way. Matthew Stafford, get one. Yeah. This is my favorite day of the off season. At work outside, it feels like it's real now. We're getting close to football season, man. You know, they always say when the grass is green, the sky is blue. You got a lot of work to do. Oh. And this schedule kind of puts a little bit more work yeah. forward for you to go get to. Every year you find the good in the schedule and the bad in the schedule. And what you think is a weakness becomes a strength. What you think is a strength becomes something terrible. Like I always laugh at people right now, they're like, oh, strength of schedule is like, I'm like, you have no idea what these teams are going to be like this year. Whatever you think you know about the schedule right now, like you don't. Oh, there he is. Hey, Mike. We're ready to roll whenever you are. Regular season begins. You're on the road at the Seattle Seahawks. Home openers against the San Francisco 49ers. In week three, you've got your first primetime game. On the road at the Cincinnati Bengals. On the road at the Dallas Cowboys. Thanksgiving weekend at Arizona. Week 16 is your Thursday game. So you're at home against the New Orleans Saints. New Year's Eve in New York. And at the 49ers. And we finish week 18 at the 49ers. Thank you very much. This gathering represents the start of a new chapter. It's your first chance when you get the new players involved in your team, where you get a chance to be physical. Here we go, man. Let's have a bounce in our step. Let's go. Let's sit on my training so that I can come into training camp as the best player that I can be and so that I can cement my role on this team. You don't really know what you have until you work with these guys. It's up to a coach to put them in the best position to have success. I just came in with a chip on my shoulder. He wouldn't regret giving me this opportunity. 